Hi, my name is Karthik and I'm from executeautomation.com and welcome to the all new course of understanding the ABC of Docker. And in this video, I'll be talking about the introduction to Docker. Well, what is Docker? And why suddenly in Exit Automation, we are discussing about Docker while we were discussing about the automation testing world? Well, Docker in a nutshell is a software containerization platform and it provides a abstraction of operating system level virtualization, but it really doesn't sound anything to be done with the automation. Of course not, but Docker is very, very handy in terms of automation testing also. While you start reading this course and understanding this course, you will understand why we are actually heading towards Docker in Exit Automation. So at the end of this video, you'll understand why we are actually going towards Docker in Exit Automation. So in a nutshell, it's a software containerization platform. So everything in the Docker world is a containers. So what is container? Don't worry about it yet because we will be discussing about containers a lot more detail in the upcoming videos of this particular course. But basically Docker is a software containerization platform. It holds everything as a container. And that's why you see all these containers on the top of the, the veil that you are seeing in the logo. So it's a purpose that the veil actually holds all these uh, containers uh, and it's taking it very happily. And actually it does make sense because these containers are very, very handy for the veil to uh, ship most of the things. So in a high level, these dockers contains the real operating system, software that you build, dependencies to run the software like the prerequisite softwares and the environment variable and you name it. So operating system can be a Linux operating system and the software that you build can be any of the software that you are building. For example, a ASP.NET Core application or it can be a PHP application or WordPress application. So all these will be sitting into this container and the dependency to run the softwares. So for a WordPress, you require a PHP, you require a MySQL database, and you require some environment variables, some starting parameters. So everything will be sitting within that particular container. So if your customer or if your client or your employee is gonna use these containers, then they don't really have to set up all these stuff. They just have to pull the container from the cloud or your local cloud or within your local system environment and boom, you will have everything in there. So again, don't worry about it, how they are pulling the data and how containers are sitting on a cloud or within your local environment. We will be talking about that in a greater detail in this course. Well, just as a high level, these are the containers all about. So these containers are VM images, right? Of course not. The virtual machine, as you can see on the left hand side, uh, it has an infrastructure, of course, some of the bare metal machines, or it can be a server, which can be a infrastructure. And within an infrastructure, you will have a host operating system. It can be a Windows or a Linux or a OS X. And then on the top of the operating system, you will actually have a hypervisor. So these hypervisors can be a Hyper-V, in Windows or VirtualBox or a VMware, right? So you can have anything as a hypervisor. And within the hypervisor, like the Hyper-V or VirtualBox, you'll actually have the guest operating system. So the guest operating system can be a Windows or a Mac or Linux, whatever it is. So you will have that. And within the guest operating system, you will have your applications, bins and libraries and then you will have your application itself. So this is how a virtual machine actually works. Whereas in a container environment, you can see that again, we'll have an infrastructure. Of course, you have to run this in a machine. So that's what is the infrastructure. And you will of course require an operating system like Windows or Mac or Linux. And then instead of a hypervisor, you will actually have a Docker engine. So here is the change. It actually has a Docker engine and then you can see that there is no guest operating system itself. It directly jumps into your application libraries or binaries and then your application itself. So what happened to this guest operating system? Well, Docker engine actually take care of that. Currently, the Docker engine comes with a pre-built tiny operating system within it. And that operating system will hold all these applications as a container. 
So don't worry about it yet. We will talk about this in a greater detail in upcoming videos of this course. But just to get a clear understanding of how things works, the layer of the guest operating system is completely gone. And the reason is because the Docker is so famous is since the guest operating system actually holds the hard disk space and it holds a lot of memories and RAM consumptions, those things will be completely gone in the Docker engine world. Since the Docker engine will take care of these operating systems because there will be one operating system kernel which shares the different containers and perform the operation. So the virtual machine includes the application, the necessary binaries and libraries and an entire guest operating system, all of which can amount to tens of GBs, right? Whereas in a container, container includes the application of all its dependencies as we discussed in our previous slide, but shares the kernel with other containers. So you can see that it actually shares the kernel with other containers running an isolated process in user space and the host operating system. So Docker containers are not really tied to any specific infrastructure. They runs on any computer, on any infrastructure, in any cloud. So it can be a Linux operating system or a Mac operating system or a Windows operating system, or it can be any cloud like Windows Azure or Amazon's AWS or DigitalOcean or whatever it is. So it runs on any of these clouds as well. So how Docker achieved this container stuff? Well, way back it was made possible with the help of LXCs or otherwise called as Linux containers. So there is a concept of Linux containers pretty long time ago and Docker made use of that. So LXCs or user space interface for Linux kernel containment which make it possible to run multiple isolated Linux containers on one control host or the LXC host. And the Linux container serves as a lightweight alternative to VMs as they don't require the hypervisors like VirtualBox or KVM or Zen, etc. So the concept of hypervisor is completely gone. The Linux kernel itself is shared among each containers and each containers act as a independent operating systems here. All right, as that said, the Dockers now is our only solution to the run in your machine, but not in mine. Because most of the time, we developers and testers fight each other saying, hey, your machine actually runs the application, but in my machine, the same application is not running fine. Now that particular problem is completely gone with the help of Docker. And the reason is because the Docker container is going to be same for everybody. So if you share the container among your team, then this problem that runs in your machine, but not in mine is completely gone. All right, that's why Dockers call themselves as a build, ship, and run as their a caption to say that they just want to build the container, ship it, and run it in any machine. So what's the roadmap of this course then? The first course of this Execute Automation channel is going to be the understanding of the basics of Docker, the ABC of Docker. And then we will use the Docker for Selenium automation testing by using some of the containers, which is already pre-built and is available on the hub.docker.com. And then we are going to create our own container for automation and development purpose. So these are going to be a completely different sections in Execute Automation channel. So we will be learning the complete Docker's from ground up towards the advanced. All right, guys. So let's get started then and see you in the next video. Thank you.